This clip on LTM comes on the back of previous clips I've made on sensory memory and STM, so check out my YouTube channel for those clips. So some of the key aspects of LTM, it appears to have an unlimited capacity for a duration of up to a lifetime. And while some information can be stored in LTM visually or acoustically, the majority of it seems to be encoded semantically. Of course, once it's in LTM, it doesn't guarantee that at will we can retrieve it on demand. It might decay through lack of revisitation. We might have a ret retrieval failure due to the absence of the right cue, or we might get some interference, particularly when we have stimulus simil similarity. The information in LTM is not part of our conscious awareness. So therefore it's a passive store as opposed to STM, which is an active store. So LTM basically contains a library full of information that we can retrieve at will with a queue, and then it involves a transfer from LTM to STM where we can work on it, manipulate it, etc. So in categorizing long-term memories, firstly we've got implicit memories which are performed without explicit or conscious awareness. So we can simply execute the processes involved in performing a task without needing to bring these processes consciously to mind. Explicit memories on the other hand, uh, as the name implies, are explicitly stored and retrieved and thus they require conscious recollection when we're trying to recall, for instance, mum's birthday, who the Prime Minister of Australia is, the formula for area of a circle, etc. So declarative or explicit memories are memories that we can declare either verbally or in a written sense and procedural memories we don't need to declare how to do something we can just do it. Procedural memories typically require repetition and practice their skills and it's hard to actually explain how we actually do them so for instance trying to explain how we do a backhand in tennis it's easier just to actually perform the activity. Episodic memories are unique to an individual they're like an autobiographical reference of an event. They relate to the where and when or the time and place in which a memory was formed. And an in interesting feature of episodic memories is that when we're recalling them, we need to reconstruct the memory. In other words, we don't actually have an accurate recall of every minute detail of the actual event. So we actually bring to mind what we can and as we're doing this, there's other bits that are literally being refabricated when we recount the actual episode. Semantic memories, on the other hand, aren't unique to an individual. This knowledge is shared with other people. So it's a more structured record of facts, concepts, intellectual skills, etc. So that's when we're recalling them, we generally recall them far more accurately than episodic memories. In terms of the brain structures involved in, firstly, the formation of a long-term memory, the hippocampus is involved in the encoding of a declarative memory, but not in the storage of a declarative memory, as indicated by sufferers of anterior grade amnesia who can still recall declarative memories made prior to the onset of their condition, but they can't form new declarative memories because of damage to the hippocampus. But sufferers of an anterior grade amnesia can actually form new procedural memories. These, these type of memories are stored by different areas of the brain, for instance the cerebellum as well as the motor cortex and a few other areas of the brain.